Well, it was a tremendously satisfying to me, a German Jew, to be uh, there for the, for the end, end of the war, a, a, a war we won, and with Germany totally defeated. In mid-1945, mid-May 1945, I was a translator at the arrest of German Field Marshal Keitel. Keitel was the supreme commander of all of Germany's Wehrmacht, the Army, Navy, and Air Forces. After Hitler's suicide, Keitel signed Germany's unconditional surrender. Now he was to be arrested and put on trial in Nuremberg, the war crimes trials. Usually only generals are assigned to arrest top-ranking officers, but no Allied generals was available to pick Keitel up. I, I was sent to German headquarters to bring him to the airport where Allied generals would formally arrest him. At Wehrmacht headquarters, the military guards were still behaving as in wartime, as if they were still in charge. I was the only Allied officer there. No other American British officer came with me. It was intimidating, but I wasn't really afraid. I knew there was nothing these defeated men could do to me. I bent over backwards to be correct. I, I made, made every effort not to do anything vindictive. It, it could be interpreted to be vindictive, particularly they were, they were no longer, they no longer had power. I think one reason why they sent me is I looked Jewish. And then I think one other way to get at him is that my rank was only first lieutenant. So uh, that too uh, had a psychological impact, which was intended, I think. In any case, uh, uh, we consummated the arrest, and uh, from then on, everything went according to plan. When we arrived at the airport, it turned out that the plane to take Keitel away had not waited for him, but had taken off again to do some sightseeing, to show the U.S. and British generals Copenhagen from the air. It was not clear when they would be back. Keitel was stunned, and he had to wait. He was stupid enough to say to me that he had to rush in order to pack, and now he had to wait. I just ignored what he said, but in retrospect, I wish I had said that we had been waiting six years to capture him, so he could certainly wait a few hours for his arrest. At the subsequent war crime trials in Nuremberg, Keitel was sentenced to death and hanged. I was there a couple of times in the audience, listening, listening to see how what was happening. I was there for a couple of hours, twice, so you don't get you don't get that much. But I saw the the, uh, uh, the commitment that the Allies had made to make making this trial a success. I felt that he had uh, changed. You know, that was he was a prisoner of war. I felt it was fair and just and it was bound to happen, you know. And I don't know how you define war criminals nowadays, but uh, they had given their all to Hitler, and they could take the consequences, and should take the consequences, and did take the consequences, which meant the end of their lives. <laughs>